Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I need to get ready for the day, so I'm just gonna slap some makeup on. I'm starting with this L'Oreal primer. This is the 24 hour redness eraser. I've been using this and I'm kind of liking it. Maybe I don't have as much redness as I used to. I always think of my skin as being prone to readiness. And I, th I think that might just be my memories of my youth <laughs> when my skin was very, very pink and very like uh, ruddy regularly. I had a lot of redness in my cheeks and my nose area. And I feel like the older I get, maybe not so much. So I don't know if I really need a green color corrector primer, but I don't know, I feel like it does a good job. For foundation today, I'm using a combo I haven't used in a while, which is my Shiseido Synchro Skin in a shade that's a little too light, and the Misha BB Cream, which is in a shade a little too dark. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit here, and then I'm gonna mix them together. I feel like I definitely mixed up too much of it, but neither here nor there. We'll just use what we need. It's been such a busy month, such a busy month, and I think a lot of that is due, in fact, to the part that my kids are like going, hither and yon, like school year's almost over. Um, my oldest is just about to take finals for their first year of high school and they're a little bit freaked out. My youngest has been really busy. Um, they're in seventh grade this year, but this month we've been taking them everywhere for like rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal because they were getting together with three other kids, youngest plays violin, um, and uh, they were forming a quartet and performing for a music competition. It's one of the biggest music competitions in our state. <laughs> and so there was a lot of extra rehearsals with the violin teacher, rehearsals with the cellist's cello teacher. A week ago Wednesday, my husband took our youngest um, to Spokane, which is like three hours from here, so that they could perform with the other members of the quartet for this music festival. And they did so well. So they were performing in like the eighth grade and under group. And one of the adjudicators told them, you know, I thought by listening to you guys just in the hallway walking by that you must have been a high school group. I had no idea you were sixth and seventh graders. And I was like, oh, so proud. So, 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 so proud. And they did so well, they scored 99 out of 100 that they were invited back on Friday to actually perform at their local public radio station. And, all the parents who had, I didn't go up on Wednesday. My husband had taken the day off and driven our youngest up and some other parents from the other families. And everybody was like, I can't take another day off of work. And I was like, well, uh, I'm free on Friday. I'm more than happy to drive the kids. So I had four kids, four sixth and seventh graders, like, you know, loudness. It, we had a really good time, but there was just a lot of energy in a small vehicle. <laughs> So we were basically just going up there for a three minute performance of their piece at Spokane's public radio station. And I was like, this is a lot of work. But the thing is, I realized the reason I was doing it wasn't because my kid was going to be on the radio, it was because it seemed like the kids were really proud of their work and an opportunity to be invited back, not just to perform for the competition, but to perform in a public way. It was just reaffirming their hard work you know this is what happens when you work really hard something special happens and i was like yeah let's do it for that reason because uh, i was so tired i had such a crazy week such a crazy week all i could think of is what i would really rather be doing is sleeping and not getting up at 4 45 in the morning because it's a three hour drive from where we live they wanted us there by 9 30. i don't know the spokane area really well so we had to i was like guys i don't know if we're gonna hit traffic i don't know any of that Let's leave at 6.15. That gives us an extra 15 minutes of wiggle room performances and until 10, they want us there by 9.30. So it was just a lot of, okay, let's pick up this first set of kids. Let's pick up the next kid and then we'll be off. Thankfully, even though it's a quartet, two of the kids are siblings. So my kid, one other, and a pair of siblings. Boy, but it was, it was really, really, really a wonderful opportunity. It was so proud, so proud of the kids. They did such a good job. It was fabulous. So proud of them. I forget how good these formulas are, especially together. Now, I never would have put them together with the exception of the fact that one is too light and one is too dark. I have really been liking this. I know it's not a new product, but I picked it up during the Sephora sale. Somebody recommended this to me. This is the Vanish Airbrush Concealer from Hourglass. I have it in the lightest shade Birch, but I really, it's like a lot of coverage. It's really, 
really good. I need just the smallest amount, like right here, right here. And I'm gonna put just a little dot on the outside because I do have a little bit of darkness there. This is one though that I find works best when I tap it out with my finger and then finish with a sponge or a brush. If I go straight in um, with a brush or a sponge, I feel like a lot of this product um, can kind of sit in one area and not get distributed as much as I need it to be. I tried it the other day with a wet velour puff. If you're curious, I'll leave that video for you here. Um, it was a really interesting way to apply foundation. I don't think that it worked for this concealer, but I haven't tried it with anything else. That's the only time I've done it. And I don't know that it's any better, like a method, than using a damp sponge. I've got just a little bit of the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder that I'm gonna tap on underneath the eyes. I'm only gonna use this underneath the eyes. I feel like I'm being super extra with the powders I have pulled. I have like three powders pulled. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself in that situation where you're like, and this, and this, and this. It's late in the morning, I've you know, been running my errands, my kids have had different start times to school today. Um, I've had other things to do this morning and we've got um, a music program this evening. Oh my goodness, I'm just like so overwhelmed of all the things I have to do. Anyway, um, I'm like, if it's before 11 and I'm finally getting my makeup on, I'm still winning. If it's like after one o'clock, then maybe the day has gotten away from me. <laughs> but I've been out in the garden. I'm gonna put Beauty, Beauty in just for a little tease on blurring. My kids had two different start times to school today because my oldest had a formal yesterday. This is the first time that either of my kids have been out with somebody that they've liked. And like, they, I guess it's a first date. And it's my oldest and I was like, my daughter is getting in a car with a boy and it's just them. And I, I had that moment of like, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, the door closed. And I was like, ah! but it was, it was one of those afternoons where we were, I was helping her get dressed and she was, um, you know, ironing the dress and curling the hair and doing the makeup. And normally she did all of those things on her own, but she wanted it to be so perfect. There was a lot of, mom, am I doing this right? Mom, does this look okay? So I finally just said, sit down, let me help you with your makeup. I'm not gonna do your eyes, but I can get your base done. Let me put the, the curlers in your hair. You can take them out when you're ready. So like, I kind of got her, you know, and while all of that was going on, I was ironing her dress, but it was, it was one of those things where, we both had a little bit of that nervous, unexpected, what's going to happen, I don't know, kind of energy going on. And I was trying really hard to be cool about the whole, my kid's going on a date. And then there was that moment of like when she finally left and, you know, he came to pick her up. My husband did the whole, well, what time do you expect to be home this evening? <laughs> it was like, told him beforehand, don't scare the poor boy. But the thing is, there's a two year age difference. He's 17. And I was like, uh my 15 year old and I know two years is not that big a deal but I feel like in high school two years can be kind of a thing but she's she's very mature anyway it would they had a great time they were back you know by curfew everything was fine but I, I had that moment of like wait what how is what you know in my mind's eye I still see her like a toddler do you know that that um clip from father of the bride from the 90s where steve martin's talking to his daughter she's like dad i'm getting married and he flashes back to seeing her as a toddler at the table talking about i met this guy and we fell in love and we're getting married i had that sort of moment in my mind and i was like uh whoa how is my tiny tiny child going on a date anyway they had a good time but i I had a kind of a, a little bit of an out of body experience <clears throat> for the rest of my face. I'm just gonna grab the Kosas uh, cloud set and just lightly go over the rest of it. Not that this really needs to be powdered, but I do kind of have a long day. Um, there is a music program this evening. The school that my kids go to, they have a really strong music program and my kids are really musical. If I didn't mention it, my oldest plays piano, um, does a lot of music competitions. My youngest, of course, mentioned plays violin. And so it's the orchestra concert tonight. And thankfully, thankfully, like in 2021, uh, when they started doing concerts again, the schools decided instead of having one big like spring concert or Christmas concert where all of the groups are together, let's split it up. They started doing that because you could only have a certain number of people in the room. And then beyond that, the parents fell in love with like 
okay, we're just gonna be here for 25 or 30 minutes to hear orchestra music or band music or choir music. And I was like, yes. So my kids are each in one group. And so going for just that one performance, but that just means it's a lot more work for the teachers and they have to do it like a whole week running, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is a lot of work for them. But as a parent, I have been loving it. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of bronzer. I was in love with this last summer. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Bronzer. It's so good. I remember last year likening this to a high-end product. It felt very Charlotte Tilbury to me. It felt very, you know, like if the packaging was different, I don't know that I would notice a difference. It's such a pretty easy bronzer. It's not too much. I have the lightest shade in fair but I like how, you know, it's smooth, it's blendable, it's almost undetectable, but brings such a nice bit of warmth to the face. I feel like this time of year, time just flies. I can't believe we're already to the end of the month and my kids are gonna be done with school in like no time flat, first week of June and they're done. And um, my kids and I are all gonna take like a, a week or two break. We're just like not gonna do anything. We're gonna relax, we're just gonna, and then it's like, okay, back to work. Um, my husband, of course, works from home, so he's always working, but um, I told my kids, like, we won't do any music lessons. I won't make you guys do any, like, summer homework. Um, I told my oldest, who has a job, you're not going to be working for those first two weeks. Let's just take some time off and chill and kind of, like, relax from the hard work we put in for the last nine months over the school year, and then we'll get back to it. I'm going to be using this blush today. This is new from Beauty Pie. This is their Super Cheek Vitamin Powder Blush. This is in the shade Current Mood. Um, I picked this up and tried it on for the first time. I've always been combining it with another blush, and this will be the first time that I'm like putting it on just on its own. It's described kind of like as a nude blush, but I feel like it has a very definitive like pink lean to it. It feels less nude and more like a mauvey pink, but remember, I'm pretty fair. I'm gonna do something terrible and I'm gonna use a product you can't get anymore, but it's not specifically this product, it's just what this product does. And it was a limited edition uh, Heaven's Glow Blush from M, but it's basically this really bright pink shade. I know there are so many brands that have a pink blush like this. The ones from Persona, the ones from Dior. Um, I feel like a lot of brands have that. And this is just to bring like a little pop of color to kind of give a little bit more dimension. And it also has just a little bit of glow to it. Don't feel bad that you can't get this blush anymore, but Think about if you have a blush that brings just a little bit of pop, sometimes using two different colors can uh, really kind of bring some life to the face. I am gonna throw on a little bit of the M Sunscape Highlight. This is the lightest shade in Clarity. This is such a pretty glowy powder. And I'm just gonna put this like right here on the tops of my cheekbones. I don't wanna go too crazy. Another thing I've started doing just to kind of help the blend is to take just a little bit of a powder. You could use a finishing powder. I feel like one of the ones from Hourglass would be nice, but this is the one I already have out. And I'm just gonna go over the top of this just kind of to make sure that it's blended well together. Part of it is just using a big fluffy brush like this um, and with a little bit of powder, make sure that it you know, highlights not too much, that the um, blush is not too bright, that it all kind of blends well, especially right here because sometimes I can get my blush a little too far forward. My eyebrows are perplexing me. I'm going to throw on my little elf duo here. I've got the ultra precise brow pencil that I'm going to be using and then the wow brow later kind of to set it and hold it into place. If you're a parent of teenagers or kids who are older already, um, how did you handle like your parental anxiety when your kids started dating? And for me, it's just, it's new territory. I'm sure that like in a year from now, I'll be fine. And when my youngest goes out on a date, I'm not gonna freak out. But right now I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm finding humor in it, but I'm also a little bit like, ah. um, and my my oldest is, is loving the whole, look, I'm, I'm old enough and mature enough to be able to go out on a date. And then there's me going like, mm -hmm. So um, this young guy, such a sweet guy, nice family and all, um, but he is working at the pool this summer and he was telling my daughters like, hey, I'm gonna be working at the pool. Um, uh, why don't you come and hang out at the pool this summer? And, and all I could think of was, you know, let's not distract him while he's at work. <laughs> and I think it was more just me like, you know, because normally what happens is I drop my kids off at the pool. I don't hang out because I don't like to be in the sun. And it's always so busy, unless you're there at like 
right when they open at 10 in the morning, there is no shade to be had. And of course, as the sun moves, um, the umbrellas move, you could move the chairs around, but it's so busy in the summertime. And the kids are in the pool and they're having fun. But if he's working, he's not really going to be doing that. Um, but I, I'm sure that they would find a chance to chat every now and again and, you know, hang out a little bit. And maybe he would say after his shift is over and I'm just like, mm, I don't know. But we'll, we'll see. I'll probably be cajoled into, come on, take me to the pool. I would love to know if you like enjoy spending time in your garden. I love the idea of a garden. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that um, I love to eat produce that I've grown. Um, I spent a lot of time gardening when I was young because my mom loves to garden. But what I realized growing up was that my mom doesn't like to weed. My mom doesn't like to dig holes to plant things in. She likes to put the things in the ground and, you know, actually plant them, but not digging the holes um, or keeping the weeds out or watering. My brother and I were always watering, weeding and digging holes. And when your mom plants like 2000 bulbs every fall, that's a lot of holes to dig. <laughs> so, um, bless her heart. I feel like my mom kind of primed me not to enjoy gardening and I like a bad mom. I've done the same thing to my kids. Like, oh, you didn't get everything done that you said you were gonna get done and you need an extra little chore to remind you to be a person of your word. Why don't you go pull a bucket of weeds for me? <laughs> so my kids always are like watering or weeding and I'm like, mom, and maybe I should be better about, you know, what I have them doing. But I was out this morning, my kids were already at school um, and I was out, you know, planting my tomatoes, um, I picked up some bleeding hearts. I'm trying to find some low maintenance perennials for the yard. I have a few, the peonies are blooming right now. They're absolutely stunning. I have some fresh cut on my table, plus plenty out more in the yard. But there is that point of once the peonies are gone, then what? And maybe bleeding hearts are also earlier, like mid to late spring. So they're about to be done, but they'll be beautiful next year. I just have not spent a lot of time thinking about the ornamental sort of plants. I always really go hard for like the vegetables and the garden. And my husband told me as I brought more stuff home from the nursery, he's like, you know, I hate gardening, but I'll do it for you. I haven't used this in forever. This is the Muse eyeshadow palette from Lisa Eldridge. It's got some rosy tones in here. I thought it might be nice to do something slightly rosy since we've got kind of a really pinky blush on. So I'm gonna start with a combo of this and this right here, kind of in the crease, just dancing back and forth between the two and then putting it on. I have been trying really hard to get back into wearing more eyeshadow. I have been like seriously in the camp of like one and done, but I told myself you have so much eyeshadow you can't just like quit wearing eyeshadow. I mean, I guess I could, but I forget sometimes how much beautiful eyeshadow I have. So I thought, let's see what there is, what's inspiring today and just make some time. I'm using this metallic shade here called Love in Venice on the lid. I feel like I might have compressed these down too hard with my finger when I was doing swatches when I first got them because I feel like there's a, a layer of hard pan that I'm dealing with here. But I don't remember having before. I remember them being very soft and putty-like. I don't know if that's a flaw in the formula or whether they just weren't meant for like big, fat, chubby fingers to be pressing down in them. I'm going to use this luster shade here in Taffeta Fan right on the center of the lid just to bring a little bit of light. And I might just a little bit on the lower lash line. I have the new Line Work Eyeliner from Danessa Myrick. It's a brush tip eyeliner. I've really been liking this. It's black. I normally go for brown. I've been devoted to the one from M for like three years. It's like so amazing. And I've gone through so many of them. And now my oldest um, is addicted to it as well. I'm like, don't fall in love with a $22 eyeliner. It gets really expensive. Um, she ran out of it just before the formal and she's like, mom, I don't have any more eyeliner. I'm like, well, lucky for you. I have backups. I had three backups and I gave her one, but I was just like, whoa. The other thing I like to do is just kind of wiggle it in between the lashes to blank out the flesh tone gaps. I have quite a few of them here on the right eye, not as many on the left. I feel like some of my eyelashes have been falling out and I don't know if that's true or whether that's just me thinking that's happening. I have really been liking this Makeup Forever Aqua Resist color pencil. Okay, so I have the shade Iron, and this is the one that I use for kind of tight lining. 
because I find that it lasts better. If I get the liquid liner, it doesn't, even though it's like water resistant, my eyes must have caustic tears. This actually stays really well as long as I don't get it like full on in the upper water line. I'm just kind of going right at the base of the lashes and shoving this up in there. And I feel like it does a really good job. This is the Tartlet Tubing Mascara. Oh, <laughs> I always do that. I don't know how I always do that. I find with the Tubing Mascara, if I wait until it's dry, it's just bad. So I always try and get it while it's still wet when I get it below my eye, but I, okay, I'm gonna have to fix this later. I'm gonna take a minute to spray my face with the Glow Recipe Watermelon Setting Mist. I guess it's more of a hydrating mist. That was just to bring a little bit of glow back to my face. I am gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray to kind of lock everything into place. For lips today, I'm gonna to go for something really easy, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liner and the new Cream Supreme from Make. I like that new lipstick a lot. I've been using it quite a bit. Thank you so much for listening today and uh, especially for paying attention to the ramble about my kids who are into music and going on first dates and my garden and you know I would love to know what you're up to what your life is looking like right now let me know in the comment section down below I do also really like the way this turned out you know using some things that are new um, that I feel like are really beautiful Ooh, even this new uh, blush from Beauty Pie I really let me open it I think it's really good. And then going back and using some things that are definitely, like I know they work really, really well, that I just kind of lose track of because I have such a large collection. Like the e.l.f. brow products, fantastic. Um, and then uh, kind of revisiting what was a really big trend in my makeup aesthetic this time last year, which was kind of rose toned eyeshadow. And it's really pretty, it's really pretty, very easy. Um, and I, I like being able to wear kind of pinkier blush, pinkier eyes, you know, quite a bit of bronzer. I think it looks pretty good. Let me know how you're doing, how your month is kind of wrapping up, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon.